Thank you very much, Hari, and thank you all for joining today. The theme of our uh, webinar today is positive thinking, and we'll try to answer or to discuss with you the question about, is it luxury? Is it easy to have? Is it, <clears throat> is it nice to have, or is it a necessity as an, as an important way to um, overcome challenges and uh, progress in life? To do so, I asked one of my dear friends from Norway, Sverda Stoji, who for me uh, is the incarnation of, the human incarnation of positive thinking. I have been knowing Zvera for more than 25 years. Uh, we work together on and off, but also we, we remain friends during all this period of time. And whenever I had discussions with him around business, around life, he always, uh, in a very simple way, demonstrated how positive thinking is part of his uh, DNA. But before I um, uh, ask Zvera to join me, I would just would like to share with you this quotation, which will be hoping that it will uh, set the scene for the whole webinar. This quotation is from Gandhi, uh, and I will read it for you. Keep your thoughts positive because your thoughts become your words. So we'll start with the thoughts. Keep your words positive because your words become your behavior. Then keep your behavior positive because your behavior becomes your habits. Keep your habits positive because your habits become your values. And last but not least, keep your values positive because your values become your destiny. So a, th a thought and the sequence will reach to your destiny. And this is, of course, quotation from Gandhi. Without further ado, I would love uh, to have Zvera with us. So Zvera, if you can enable your uh, video. Hello, everyone, and thank you for the invitation, Mame. Thank you. Delighted to be here. Thank you very much, Shizbera. Ali, would you like to put us on the virtual? Um... Yeah, thank you. Very good. Very good. So um, my first question, and by the way, team, uh, just uh, for the participants, just a uh, heads up, is that we <coughs> agreed on the questions with Zvera, but we did not rehearse on the answers. So we'll discover each one's answer during the session to make it as natural as possible. Uh, you are uh, more than welcome to, um, to stop your video. Uh, you are muted by automatically, as mentioned by Ali, and as far as the video is concerned, it is up to you to disable your video manually. <clears throat> so Zvera, the first question to set the scene, you did a very courageous, for me, a very courageous step in your career around, I can't remember exactly 30 or more, Four years ago, where you stopped your corporate career as a uh, as a lawyer for one of the biggest uh, shipping companies in, in Norway, to start your self employment path and career, and I know that you have been uh, that you went through a number of challenges and difficulties. Can you share with the audience those some of those challenges and how positive thinking was of help to uh, succeed? Sure, uh, it was a, a time where uh, it was very very popular to reorganize. So the company that I was working in was reorganized. So I was more or less reorganized away. Um, so then I could get, I could apply for another job. On the other hand, we had, had many consultants within the company. And I saw that um, when you're working with different comp companies, you learn a lot and it's also a freedom. So I finally found out that, okay, why not start by myself? But it was a tough, uh, tough decision because I had a fat salary, fat car, fat house, slim wife. Uh, um, and so I, when I asked my friends, uh, what do you think? They would say, are you out of your mind? It is the session. You will never, ever make it. It, it, it will not work. That's half of, that's half of the, uh, uh, the people I asked, the other half said, hmm, yeah, maybe that could, uh, maybe that could uh, happen. So I had to reduce my circle of friends by half, <laughs> uh, which means that all the pessimistic people, they say we are not pessimistic, we are realistic. Um, so then I asked them, how do you see a bald headed man? So the pessimistic people said, Okay, if you're bald headed, it's more, more face to wash. But when they ask if uh, ask the positive or the, um, the positive people, they said, well, 
bald headed people, then it's less hair to comb. So it, it is, what do you choose? So what I had to do, I had to tell my friends, we need a break. We need a break. Um, so uh, because you are putting negative uh, thoughts into my head and that makes me weak. So weak thoughts, weak forces, strong thoughts, strong forces. So after that, I sat down with a friend and we met, made a mental picture three years ahead in presence. So it is, we were already there when we put, put that down. And uh, then I started to work with my subconscious because the subconscious takes what it gets. So once your subconscious mind has accepted a belief or idea, whatever, true or not, it will continually feed your thoughts to support the belief. So if I believe I cannot make it, it will happen. And if I thought, oh, I will never make any money, it will happen. And the other way around. So that's why uh, we started. And I also had some um, a good friend who said, you are invited for dinner together with 15 of my business colleagues from 15 different branches. And we will have a dinner and you are invited. And beside the plate, it was paper and pen. So my friend told the 15 people that we will now help Sverre. And what you are going to do is write down five names with five telephone numbers that Sverre could call after you have called them. So they put up 75 uh, telephone numbers to me. I made 75 uh, telephones because they knew that I would telephone them because they, my friend has already, or my friends had already done that. So that, that is more or less uh, the, the start. Uh, and when I had the mental picture and I had the first customer, then I got a job in London Business School. So ju just to uh, give an example for how uh, the way of thinking can uh, be used. Because two months before that, um, for, for me, a country boy from Norway, it is quite some big things to uh, be invited to have uh, half a day in uh, London Business School. So two months before, I had three sentences that I used, used, used to get it from the conscious into the subconsciousness. And that is, I am strong, they want my knowledge and I will make them laugh. I am strong, uh, they want my knowledge and I will make them laugh. On the plane from Oslo to London, I was seated beside a very British, very English, English man with polished nails, uh, upper class. And he asked, what are you going to do in London? I said, I will give a speech for London Business School. You? Yes. Ah, that is exotic. So if I hadn't fed my subconscious with I am strong, they know they want my knowledge and I will make them laugh. Maybe he was maybe I would have thought that, oh, he's right. What should I do in, in London? And so when I overnighted and I had and the start the start of the seminar. Fifth, it started at nine. So quarter to nine, I went to the toilet. And then I thought, thought, I'm strong. They know, they want my knowledge. I will make them laugh. To that speech, and it's also prepared me in every other way of uh, starting some challenges. So as Dalai Lama says, uh, sometimes not getting what you want could be a wonderful stroke of luck. That's it. Thank you, sir. So, I have a question for you, Ahmed. Was positive thinking natural for you? And what happened when you realized that it really worked? Um, as maybe some of you or maybe all of you know that I'm originally from Egypt and Egypt is as a Middle Eastern country, Mediterranean country, we are always thinking positively, we are always laughing, thinking positive things. But step by step, at the beginning of my career, 
I realized that there is a difference between laughing, thinking positively and positive thinking. This kind of tool, power of the mind to make things happen. Um, I don't know if you guys have faced the same thing, but at the beginning of my life, uh, whether after, even while I was going through my education and after I finished my education, I had more people telling me what I cannot do rather than telling me what I can do. Yeah, you can do the job, but try to avoid this one because it will not pay much. Or this one, the career will not move. Or if you want to uh, uh, leave outside or live outside Egypt, you will have to find this job or that job. And so they were limiting me. Uh, but I also was very lucky that I met uh, some people, whether friends or managers or colleagues, who started to point out what I can do. And one of my early managers, uh, and he happened to be with us today, I owe him a lot because during my interview with him, he said, okay, you're applying for this job, but I see you soon enough to be working or joining the, or uh, filling that other job. And I didn't even know the, the name of the other job. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, look at the dictionary. At that time, we didn't have Google. I'm an old guy. So I went back in the night and I went to the dictionary and I, I learned about this other job and I started potentially preparing myself mentally for it. And again, this was a practice of mental power and positive thinking by projecting myself into the other job, although this was not the job that I was applying for. So step by step, I started to train myself like a child who is walking, learning how to walk. I started to practice step by step what this positive thinking is. And step by step, I start to do what, what I quoted earlier from uh, Gandhi about the different or the power of a thought, then the word, then the action, then the behavior and the values and so forth. But I can say that it was not easy and it was not just in a book or sometimes my own wife will tell me what is the button that I should uh, push to, to think positively. There is no button. And this is what I have always been telling her. We have to find our own button. We have to think, we have to practice, but we have to be well surrounded. As you mentioned, Zvera, you need to be surrounded by good friends, good colleagues, good managers. Uh, I had also another manager where he put me on the spot in one of the very important executive meeting. And, he's, and he asked me to, uh, to present my view on a very specific topic. And I said, I was not ready to, to present. He said, I'm, he was born ready. And this word I will never forget, he was born ready because immediately I got this surge of energy, of, um, of inspiration. And I managed to answer not only his question, but exceed his expectations. So again, being supported and uh, practicing it day by day was for me the, the recipe, but I failed. And I will talk later about some of the failures, but, but again, it is, it is a daily practice. Mm. Um, you are from the North, I'm from the South. And we, uh, some people would think that we, the North and the South have different ways of looking at things. And not only that, some people will think that uh, the, uh, the lucky people born and living in the North, and you are from Norway, including Denmark, uh, Finland and others, have an easier life than other parts of the world. Uh, less in unemployment um, and other more opportunities and so forth. Is it true? And in this case, do you think that positive thinking in this part of the world is just something nice to have naturally happening without struggling to, to get it and you don't need it? Or uh, there are other perceptions that you, wash, that you wish to share with us? <laughs> yes. Um, if I had failed, the government would have taken care of me. We have five and a half million people up here, but uh, we have some money in the bank and we have very good unemployment benefits. So what I could have chosen is that, okay, it didn't work. If I'd listened to all the negative guys and take a smaller job or whatever, um, the government will come in and give, give some benefits. But you have, that is also quite a job because it's lots of papers, lots of papers. And if you get in there, it is difficult to get out. And if you get in there and then apply for the job, the employer will say, okay, why did you do this? And that is negative. So what I chose was not to do it, but it is possible and it is easier. And in that respect, it's fine. You don't need to think positive because the government will take care of you. And that is not happening all over the world. So in that matter, we are of course uh, lucky up here, 
yeah, and in other other countries, it's much more difficult. Uh, so that's that could be a possibility, but I did did choose not to do it because I wanted to uh, I wanted to uh, start up with myself. But the government takes care. Okay, <clears throat> so now I have a question for you, Ahmed. You faced many difficult situations in your career and life in general. How do you use it to feed your role as a coach? Thank you, Zvela. Um, first, I had to eat my own food. I cannot coach anybody unless I know what kind of difficulties he or she are going through. So the, yes. I'm lucky because I had a wide horizon of difficulties and challenges, but I still learning until now. So, um, but, but if I will divide your question into two. First, how I went through the difficult situation and then how I use it for coaching. So the first part is that I embrace the, the concept of that our perception of any situation and every situation is depending on our mindset. Uh, let me give you an example about an athlete that who trained very hard to get a gold medal uh, in the Olympics. For four years, he, have been, he or she have been preparing for the gold medal. And if they finish second or third, they consider it as a failure. And if they finish fourth, it is they, they, they should, or they think they should commit suicide. Mm. But if you take another athlete who is young and he's starting his career, or he's between brackets old and he's finishing his career, the expectations are different because they will not put all this pressure in their mind that they will have to finish first. And in this case, if they finish fifth or sixth, they consider it as, as a big win. Mm -hmm. Same thing with any sport or career, uh, corporate career or personal career or others. Uh, Expectancy determines outcomes. And we have to be detached from outcomes. We cannot just say, I have to succeed. I have to get what I am aiming to get. Because we'll always, or most of the times, we'll be deceiving ourselves. The same thing with the, with the with challenges and difficulties. But of course, if, I, if we are facing material difficulty, health difficulty or others, there is something to be solved. And in this case, we have to recall uh, what, what the, in the French, we call it match reference, reference match, something that went right. Everything went right in this situation. And we have to bring it back to this other situation where we are facing failure, where we're facing challenges, difficulties, and we say we are able to do it in the other case, we will be able to make it here. As you said to yourself when we are going to London to, to make your own first um, intervention with the London Business School. We have to keep telling ourselves we are able to solve the problem. The end of the tunnel is through. And again, by being surrounded, positive <clears throat> thinking is a never self-centric exercise. It is always we need to be surrounded by people who will feed us and believe in us and remind us that we are able to do things. Mm. In terms of coaching, uh, it is, as I said, I try to put myself in the shoes of the person that I'm, whom I'm trying to help. I try to see the difficulties that he or she are going through. And if I was naturally in those situations before, I try to learn about this situation. I do my homework as well. Uh, empathy is part of the game, but not only empathy. It is also a 360 degree view and helping the person as a mirror. I always consider myself as a mirror to help the person looking at himself or herself from outside and see what kind of difficulties they are facing. And I just try to discuss it with him. I never give recipes. I try to just help the thinking process. Mm. This is humbly what I try to do in this, uh, in this world. Mm. So um, now the following question is, I know that your job as a consultant and you mentioned this is more than a job. You take it as a mission. And I, I also am aware that you kept reinventing yourself. You, you lived in Norway for many years and you had your own company, you had your corporate career, then you had your own company. Then you decided from one day to another when you told me a few years, um, I can't remember exactly how many years, 15 years ago or something that you decided to move to, uh, to Asia, to Singapore and then to uh, Malaysia to change and to try a new life. How did you, what, what drove this, this kind of mission that you had and how you kept reinventing yourself during all of those years as well? Well, during, uh, 
during their work in the corporate world, we had consultants in and I envied their freedom. Um, and also, uh, it, is a, it, it is a big advantage to, to be a consultant because as a consultant, you help other people in their, in their companies and there are many different business branches. So uh, that's uh, through that, uh, I will have the bonus of developing myself through the customer. And so my customers, in a way, help me to develop me myself. And in addition to that, uh, I could, of course, have uh, continued in Norway. But uh, I found out that, um, why? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so grown up now, so I think I will start doing something outside. So both my wife and I, we packed two, two um, bags, went to Singapore and said hello in Singapore. No one said hello to me. And uh, then uh, we found out that uh, maybe it's easy in Malaysia because we had some friends there. So we, I used uh, six months and a lot of money. And uh, we, in Asia, you know, you have to eat a lot. So I've never eaten so many lunches and so many dinners to get the first job. And it was close to, to fail because we had uh, 3,000 euros left after six, uh, six months. So then we ha had to decide, shall we go home to Norway or should we sell the apartment in Norway and continue. And then suddenly, by having many balls up in the air, one ball fell down and we had one customer on Tuesday and the second on Friday. And then we, we went there for 10 years. So it is, it, is a, it is an interference between me as a consultant and the, and the customer that keeps me going. Okay, a, a question for you, Amir. We are all living in a very challenging world. What is your perception around the use of positive thinking by people around you in general? Um, I, will, um, I will start with a metaphor. And mm -hmm. again, I love metaphors, as you know. Uh, I consider today, like we have, a, we have a kitchen full of recipes and full of ingredients food ingredients and um, other type of ingredients and lots of recipes. But we are keep ordering fast food. We keep going to McDonald's and we keep ordering fast food. People are bombarded every day with access uh, to information about positive thinking. Uh, for example, at the, at the beginning of my day, I receive a number of uh, notes from WhatsApp and all those kind of things around from my mother, from friends and others about quotations and other. But I feel that people are not paying attention on how to apply those. They don't test themselves. They don't re question themselves where positive thinking is applied and how it can be a tool and not just a knowledge in, uh, source. There is also another uh, um, trend that we are, all, we are all observing now. And there was a famous TikTok in last July about it, which is quite quitting. I don't know if you heard about it. Quite quitting in French. Uh, démission silencieuse for the French speakers. And this is a trend that they, they just put a name on it, but it has been around for many, many years. Is that people are still working, they are not qu qu quitting, but they are just taking it easier. They do the minimum, as the French would say, minimum syndical. They will just do what it takes not to be fired, but they will not try to give more than, than this. Some of them after the COVID will say it is not uh, uh, required. Some have other priorities, but again, it is, it is negative because they are not giving their own value to the company or to the, to the society. And at the same time saying the, society, the, the company will not give me any pay rise, so why not give? And the, the company will say, fine, he will not ask for a pay rise as long as he's around, will not, will not challenge him more. So it is like a consensus for the go downward. So those two concepts, the, the kitchen full of recipes, but we are not using it and we are still ordering fast food and it's quite quit, quitting, are giving me an impression that we are not challenging ourselves. We are not seeing how positive thinking can take us to another level. And I feel that we have to have each one of us a wake up call. 
to say, okay, maybe you do, I'm not asking people to quit really, or to suddenly go and work 20 hours a day or, 50, or 15 hours a day, like I used to do and for many, many years, and I'm not recommending anyone to do it, but at least to find where the value can be provided, where we can have passion. And again, coming back to inspiring our life, this is why I selected this brand. We have to inspire our own life to inspire others. So this is what I observe, Zvera, and I believe that we have to use this kind of the COVID and the post-COVID and all what's happening in the world, the inflation and all of this as a source of motivation and not as a, as a justification for quiet quitting. Mm. Yes. So my last question to you is something to recap your career, which is very rich, as we can see. Looking backwards to all what you have done, in different parts of the world for different customers. Now looking at what you could have done differently, what maybe if you have any regrets that you wish to share with us. Hmm. Yes. Um, when I was reorganized, I used too much time to make some pamphlets of what I should do. I used three months to write down instead of getting out and say hello to the customer. So. I should have gone out much more, but I was a little bit afraid. I was not ready. I should have something to give them and all these things. Um, and the, another thing is that uh, you have to dare to get out of your comfort zone, because if you get out of your comfort zone into the exciting, the exciting zone will then become comfortable. And I, I was sitting in a comfortable, uh, a zone for, for for too long and, uh, uh, and another thing is that uh, it is when you lose it is uh, it is important not to lose the lesson for instance i managed to get um, an appointment with the ibm boss in norway big guy uh, and i went into the meeting and i talked about what i sh usually do without thinking about what does he need. So after half an hour, uh, we ended up that uh, I have told him about uh, what I do and do and said, yes, that's interesting. But um, how do you present it? He said, well, I don't know. Well, we have a fantastic overhead here. So the meeting ended in that he sold me a, a overhead <laughs> instead of me getting a job. So what is the lesson? The lesson is that don't go into the meeting if you are not completely clear what the customer needs and listen, 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 listen. I was talking, 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 talking. So that's, that's, that's one of the regrets. A little bit, uh, little bit covered in the start, but it, it picked up. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I have a question for you. And the last one. Do you see any danger in positive thinking? Can it be too much of it? Um, I will make the link with religion. If we consider that our religion is the best and all the others, even if they believe in the same religion, but the way they practice it, they are not practicing as we do. So they are wrong and we are right. Uh, we become extremists. Same thing with positive thinking. You might say, how can I be an extremist while thinking positive? is when you think that all the others are not thinking positively and you are the only one thinking positively, or only the people around you, your close friends, are the only ones who are thinking positively like you. But all the others are, with all my respect, rubbish, because they are not thinking like you. This is a threat. This is something that you have to watch out. Not because you think that you are thinking positive, that the others are not. When you stick to your beliefs so much, you become blind and what, uh, something similar, and I didn't know that you will answer this for the last question before, when we don't listen enough. So we have to also keep linkage to reality. Being positive is not enough. And again, it is not a self-centric exercise, as I mentioned before. It is a collective exercise. And we need to see how we can be useful to others and how we can learn from others, even if they can, we can label them and not as a positive thinkers as we consider to be. We need to be open and we need to wait for some sort of uh, signal. Sometimes some people will consider them miracles or coincidence. I, I, I'm one of the people who believe that there are no coincidences. Anything that is happening is happening for a reason. So if I'm not 
thinking positively today. My emotions today are not describing my identity. I still have an identity that is not related to my emotion today because maybe today I'm upset, tomorrow I am going to be cheerful. So not my identity is not my, my negative side today and my positive side tomorrow. It is different. It is independent from all of those emotions up and down. And again, this is something that we have to watch out. Uh, but again, it is learning. As I mentioned, it's like learning how to walk. We'll walk, we'll, fit, we'll fall, we'll, we'll walk again, we'll stand up again like a child. And we have to keep learning and we have to keep learning from each other. You personally, from your Nordic uh, culture, Svera, over those 25 years, you taught me a lot about things that maybe I saw it from a different perspective. You were saying, um, don't worry, things will happen at the right time. And I kept, when I was less experienced, I kept asking you, define the, the right time. So patience is something that uh, I learn how to develop. Mm -hmm. so, so again, the combination, and this is just to recap all what we have shared with, uh, with the audience so far, is that there is no one recipe. It is just that we have to uh, always consider uh, um, uh, practicing it. Uh, look at your kitchen. Look at what you have in the kitchen before ordering fast food. I love fast food, by the way, from time to time. Last night I had a pizza, so uh, I can be uh, confessing. But fast food every day is not the right thing. Same thing with, uh, with all the recipes that we have to do something about the positive thinking and apply it in our daily life. And too much for it is, is not bad as long as we have the balance with the people surrounding us because we cannot live on our own. Yeah. So this will be my answer to your question. Thank you, Zvera. And it is great having someone from Nordics that is keeping us on time because we planned 35 minutes for this part and we are 34 minutes. So I, we cannot be more accurate than this. I mean, uh, thank you very much for that. And now we give the floor to Ali for the second half of the session, which is taking into consideration the question and answers that were included in the chat. Ali, the floor is yours. Yes, Amr, it's fair. Thank you very much. So we have the first question coming from Tarek. Do you think that age affects the way of thinking positive or negative? I didn't, I didn't hear that. Could you repeat that, please? I repeat. Do you think that age affects the way of thinking, positive or negative? <laughs> Ask my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but I, I think uh, if I should uh, start. Yes, please. please. Uh, I, I think that is very individual. If you have started a life and everything, and you have thought positive thing, it will remain. But it is, of course, uh, easy to get uh, grumpy when, when the age comes in. But um, uh, I, I think it's very individual. And sometimes you see grumpy people. Sometimes you see people that has a brain uh, as a 12 years old. I will compliment. Uh, first, I agree with you, of course. I compliment by saying that um, if we learn from our experiences, if you, if you learn from opportunities and from failures, and uh, there is a word that um, you kept uh, sharing with me over the years, whether opportunities are, uh, sorry, failures and problems are disguised opportunities. So if you learn from all of this, yes, then age will be an asset. If you have a short memory and we keep focusing on, on our problems today and the whole world will collapse if we don't get the promotion that we wanted or we don't buy the car that we wanted or whatever, then our short memory will be a curse and age will be even worse because with age, we have less capabilities. We have less energy, we have less means. So it's like, like a, a football player. When he goes beyond 35 or 33 years old, he needs to compensate his age with wisdom, with the way that he or need to be in the right place in the field. So age comes with wisdom if we learn and if we keep practicing. Age comes with a curse, if we are focusing on the day. Uh, uh, just to add a, a little bit, it, it also depends what do you have in your subconscious? What, what have you stored in your subconscious during the years? If you have stored that I'm nothing, I cannot do it, I don't manage, then it will be even worse when you get old. But if you have stored something else and some positive things in, in your subconscious, that will come back to you. Right. All right, thank you. So our next question comes from Dan Xiongming and is directed to Amr. 
how do you trigger positive thinking for oneself when you're under stress or pressure? Is there any best practice? Um, thank you, Shomin. Um, first, I tell myself, and I really I'm telling you how I apply it for myself. First, I tell myself, okay, I feel sorry about myself. And I give myself the right to feel sorry, but for a few minutes. Because the people will say, don't feel sorry for yourself. I don't believe. We have to give ourselves the right to feel sorry. This is my right. But then a few minutes later, I will say, okay, now it is enough feeling sorry about myself. What can I do about this difficult situation? And I move into the action mode. And if I cannot, I sleep on it. I will go to bed or I watch TV. Uh, and I, the following day, I will revisit the second part. What can I do about the problem? Because the problem will not disappear because I feel sorry about it. So I have to move to the second phase fast enough to do an action. And as I mentioned earlier, I need to remind myself about a similar situation. Uh, either I went through it or someone else whom I know went through it and they succeeded. So this is what I uh, refer to as match reference, reference match. They know that it worked in this other situation or I know it worked. So I try to extrapolate it and use it for this new challenge that I'm facing. But again, nothing. And I learned that no one will come and hold my hand and solve the problem. I will have to find a way. And if it takes time to find a way, fine. It would take time to find a way, but definitely we'll, we'll, we'll find a solution. And this kind of self-belief that we'll find the solution is my drive. So Vera, would you like to complement from the <clears throat> approach? Yes, of course, uh, everyone gets uh, stressed and a uh, lot of problems and things. Um, what I do is I use at least uh, 15 minutes for, maybe half an hour worrying about that and i'm really worried and i'm use what what can go wrong here and all the things that are bad yes bad 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 and then when then i allow myself to find out okay that is the worst case what is the best case so i use 50 minutes half an hour to worry and then i decide fine we put this aside now so what could be a solution? So I have my half hour worrying time alone. And then I try to find out what, how to solve it, who could help me and what to do. But it is, it is important to worry, I think, to get the shit out of the head. I like it. Back okay. to you, Arnold. Thank you. Uh, we have a question coming from Felipe Stutz. Uh, we are living difficult times in the world, lots of uncertainties and challenges at many dimensions, climate change, political and economical issues across the globe. We can't ignore some of the facts in front of us that life is becoming more challenging for many people. How can we use positive thinking in this context and not fall into the trap of being over optimistic, ignoring the reality? Zvera, would you like to take okay, it? Okay, yes. Um, Dalai Lama once said that uh, don't think that you cannot do anything as small as ev everything. I, I don't think that you are too small. Um, because have you slept with a mosquito a whole night? So small things can be done. And uh, I think it, it also it's also good for a, a person that, yes, I could do this much and this much, I have control of that much. Um, we have politicians all over the world, some good, some bad and so on. Uh, and they are doing their job, but I do my small job. And I think it is important for everyone to define what is that small point they could do and do that. Wonderful. And I will compliment by just adding on top of what you said and do what you like to do, what you love to do, what you are mm. good at. Yes. I know a friend of mine and he is with us today as well. He reinvented himself. He was working in IT and he was working on very technical stuff. And then because he loves uh, uh, um, food and healing through um, nutrition, he reinvented himself and he is now an expert in this field because he is good at it. Although he faced many, many difficulties and many challenges in his life, he is now one of the experts in this field because he does what he loves. 
yeah. and he can change his surrounding and his environment and can influence it by doing what he loves. Yes. Thank you both. Thank you. Okay, we have a question from Antonio Lima. Some see consulting as a last resort for people living the corporate life. Something like an old master retiring from the battles in favor of teaching others to fight. To start something new, one has to have confidence and positive attitude. Confidence and positive attitude are also need to keep fighting. How to choose? How to choose? What was the last sentence, Ale? Yeah, confidence and positive attitude are also need to keep fighting. Sure. How How about the, 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 last, the last sentence, what was that? To start something new, one has to have confidence and have positive attitude. Confidence yes. and positive attitude are also need to keep fighting. How to choose? Hmm. You want me to start, Ami? Yes, please, please. Okay. Um, I think confidence is linked to what you are good at, and if you if you don't think that you are good at it, then you need to get people around you to tell you what what you are good at. That will give you confidence. And a, a startup is quite uh, it's it's quite uh, challenging. So the, the, there are two things: you need good people around you, and you have to feed your subconscious through your thoughts that it will happen. So the confidence is uh, a, a part of uh, a part of time, and when you succeed, it will increase. If you, if, if you don't exceed, then you have something else to do. And, and that might be that um, maybe you should do something else. Um, I thought the question would come in, in another, another way <laughs> in that um, um, consultants are people who didn't uh, succeed in the corporate life, but, uh, but maybe we could take that later. <laughs> To answer you, Antonio, thank you very much for the question. Uh, I would just start with the, with the following expression, leap of faith. We need to have leap of faith. Each one of us need to have it, to have uh, a bet on the, on the, on the future. Um, in French, faire un pari sur l'avenir. We don't know what, what will happen tomorrow. If we have to change, we have to go to the unknown. Of course, we'll not go to 100% unknown. We'll try to select something that we love, as we said, something that is of interest, but we'll still have to have a bet. Uh, but this kind of faith is a very strong word because we are going to put our, our energy, our, um, our time, sometimes our money in something that we don't know, and we have to bet on it. And we, we need to persist, as Vera have mentioned, at the beginning, he faced challenges when he moved his career from corporate to personal and self-employed, but he persisted. He, he, and many of us went through this kind of situations and the key success factor is to persist. Leap of faith and persistence. Okay, guys, thank you. That was our last question. Okay, so... Um, Zvera, would you like to say a word not about, about the theme and about the experience that you went through with me over the last few days preparing it? Yes, it's, I have I've joined these webinars before and it looks, looks very easy. People are coming in, they talk and that's it. Um, <laughs> on Monday, I got a totally different um, experience because there are, I didn't know that, but you have three guys fixing all this and it's a lot of things that should be fixed before we come to this uh, screening up here so i am impressed that uh, you take the time all of you who is uh, behind the scene here um and uh, lots of gratitude from me to you guys and thank you thank you Sven. i will i will just again this is the session to thank each other but i will not thank you only for this webinar i will thank you for sharing your experience with me for those 25 years. You helped me a lot. 
as, as, as a friend, as a coach, uh, through your own experience in a very humble way and sharing with the audience. I hope the audience, the participants of today's webinar felt how humble you are, how simple you are, despite all of your achievements and all your successes and failures that you shared. With it's us. fine, I'm a, it's enough, it's enough. Thank you. Very good. So <laughs> now I would just uh, uh, remind everyone about, about the, um, uh, uh, the, the mission of Inspiring Our Life. So I hope that you can see my screen. So Inspiring Our Life, as I mentioned earlier, is, is a brand that is, um, I try to use it through the regular publications uh, on social media, on uh, YouTube, on uh, um, Instagram, on Facebook, and on my webpage to, with the recent um, publication and posting of short videos, one minute videos, uh, with, the, with the hope that those messages, whether written or through video, can bring new ideas for you, new inspiration sources, and new exploration in it. Again, I'm not pretending that I have recipes and I have uh, solutions. I'm just a contributor for your own thinking process, for your own exploration in life. And whenever you wish to comment on it, you wish to reach out to me uh, in any way or form, I would be delighted to, uh, to respond and to work with you in your own career development and your, your life uh, growth. Thank you very much for attending those webinars. Thank you very much for following me on the ones who are already subscribing to those channels uh, on, uh, because it gives me energy. And I hope to see you again in the future webinars and through the weekly posts that, uh, that we, we use to interact with each other. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ali, for organizing this, facilitating the session. And for the ones, for Tarek, for John, for uh, the rest, for Felipe, for Antonio, who uh, were mentioned by, by, um, by Zverra, that they were behind the scenes looking at the small details uh, to make sure that we have something respectful sharing it with you today. Thank you all and wish you a great end of the day.